Welcome back, nerds. Since we just got another gameplay showcase for Hogwarts Legacy showing off another impressive 30 minutes, we have several new things to talk about. Firstly, we've got flying on brooms and fantastic beasts. We also got a more thorough and detailed look at what they call advanced combat, battling multiple dark wizards, trolls, goblins, all of it. We got a nicer look at the room of requirement, which included far more customization than we had originally anticipated, and that segued nicely into our first detailed look at the vivarium with fantastic beasts inside of it. So I'll break down everything as I always do, but this video is mainly going to be focusing on flying. I'm going to be making separate videos for each section of the showcase, that way I can get you guys some coverage on it a little bit quicker. But the game is looking so good, you guys. If you only watched the showcase live when it premiered, I recommend going back and watching it again in 4K. The live version was significantly lower quality than what they had uploaded afterward, so at least go poke around and see if you can spot anything you didn't notice the first time. But getting into the first part of the showcase here, which was the flying portion, we can see the main character hop onto a broom and immediately fly past what looks like Hagrid's hut, but I'm not too sure if that actually is the gamekeeper's cabin, because in the other videos it looks like it's a lot closer to a different corner of the castle. Either way though, he promptly flies straight into the woods while the panel of hosts discuss the mechanics of flying. Alan Tu, the game director, explains that since it's the late 1800s, they don't have all the fancy brooms of the modern age, they're still kind of working out all the kinks, so it's not like we're at the 3000, it's more like we're at the 11, as he put it. Ben Snow, the community guest host of this presentation, then asks if there's multiple brooms or if there's upgrades, which then sparks the topic of the broom supply store. They said that there are different kinds of brooms available, but they are purely cosmetic, and they did it that way so that players would have a way to customize their character a little bit further. Plus, as the game goes on, you'll be able to upgrade certain features as well by talking to the shopkeeper. What things can you upgrade, you might be asking? Well, for starters, they've got this green band, so I'd guess that as the game progresses, you can add certain cosmetic items. But if you look at the bottom right corner, you'll see a yellow bar, and as you might guess, it's for boosting or going faster, but there's a twist to it. You can go as fast, as much as you want when you're close to the ground, but as you fly up higher, it starts to use up that yellow bar. As far as I know, it only uses it up when you're flying fast, or sprinting is what I'm going to call it. So as the game goes on, I'm sure you'll be able to increase the yellow bar, we'll just call that stamina for now, so you'll be able to sprint higher for longer. Which I think is a good way from keeping the broom from being too OP. In my experience, in games that add flying as a mechanic later on down the line, the second that you're able to actually fly, it really cuts down on the amount of exploration that you need to do on the map. And with a game of this magnitude, I personally want to explore everything I can without the temptation of being able to take massive shortcuts with a broom, so I like that it'll force you to stay kind of close to the ground. But if you feel the same way I do about it, but you also want to pre-order the game, you'll have to execute a certain amount of self-control, because as pre-order bonus, you'll get two flying mounts, the Onyx Hippogriff and the Thestral. The Hippogriff, as far as I can tell from the showcase, doesn't have any sort of stamina bar. You can kind of just get on it and fly up and away at a pretty quick pace. I'm sure flying upward will be a little bit slower, but it does look like it has a glide feature so that it can essentially dive bomb. I also wonder if that can be used as an attack that does damage too, like you just fly straight into the ground. We didn't get as good of a look at the Thestral, but if I had to guess, I'd say that it operates basically the exact same. This is only the second time we've seen one, and it kind of just pops out of the briefcase for a quick walk through the woods before disappearing back inside once it's time for the advanced combat portion of the video. I don't know what the fastest method of travel will be between these three things. Once the game comes out, I'll do a side-by-side, -side, but I fully believe once we beat the game that we'll get a dragon to ride, and that'll be the fastest mode of transportation by far. With the exception of the flu powder, obviously. But that's about all the information I could find on flying in this presentation. We did just recently get revealed to us that we can in fact jump, so that's pretty nice. I know a lot of people were worried that there would be an automatic jump feature when you got near a ledge or something that you needed to jump over, so it's good that we actually have normal jumping mechanics. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Be sure to check out my video covering the advanced combat mechanics. I'll go ahead and link that right up in here somewhere. It'll probably come out later today, maybe tomorrow. Uh, so in the meantime, if that's not it, I'll put my video covering the flu network right up in here. I go over all the locations of the flu flames and put them on a map of Hogwarts Legacy. So that'll be pretty nice. Check that out. Also, go ahead and stupefy the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps out the channel. But that's all I've got for you today. I will catch you next time, nerds.